Okay. What does it say? Well, what do we know? Well, we know concavity of the cost function tells us what? This is less than or equal to zero. Right? We know that. What's the sign of CYY? That's the change in marginal cost as we increase output. What does that have to be? Well, it's got to be positive. Marginal cost has to be rising if they're maximizing profits. Right? Can't have marginal cost falling. It'd be a minimum. Got to have marginal cost rising. So that's positive. What's the sign of CIY? That is, how does... Oh, let's do this one, CYI. How does marginal cost vary with the price of factor I? Can we say anything about that? How about this one, CIY? How does factor I vary with the level of output? What does that correspond to? What is what does the sign of this correspond to from consumer theory? That's whether the good was normal or inferior, right? That is, as we increase Y, which is the analog of U in the consumer problem, that is, is this a normal or inferior input? And an inferior input in the production example is just like an inferior good in the consumer example. It's an input we use less of as we expand output. Okay? That is, we use less of this good as we expand output. Of course, whatever the sign of this is, is the same as the sign of that is. So even if I didn't know the signs, I know the product of these two is positive. And what's the sign of a minus sign? It's negative. All right? So that means this second term, including the minus sign, is negative. So that got to reinforce the substitution effect. This is called, this whole term, is what we call the scale effect. Right? It's not an income effect. It's the scale effect. It's the effect of this factor price on the scale of the firm's output. Easiest case to think about is where the input's a normal input. You use more of the input as you expand output. In that case, as the price of the input rises, what happens to marginal cost? Marginal cost goes up. As marginal cost goes up, what happens to output? Output goes down, right? Because marginal cost rises, output falls. As output falls, what happens to usage of factor I? It goes down. So clearly, for the case of a normal input, this scale effect always reinforces the substitution effect. No question. Now the tricky one is the inferior input case. All right. So what happens to marginal cost when the price of an inferior input goes up? Marginal cost actually goes down. That is, the higher price for this input causes marginal cost to fall. How is that possible? How could a higher price for an input cause marginal cost to go down? What happens to total cost as the price of an input goes up? Always goes up, right? Always goes up. You couldn't raise the price of an input and lower total cost. That you can't do. But you can lower marginal cost. All right? Anybody see why? Well, think about it. If this is an inferior input, then as I use more output, as I produce more output, I use less of this input. And when this input is more expensive, using less of it is more attractive. So you're going to want to move your output in the direction that helps you avoid the higher price input. And for an inferior input, that's more output. Remember when I talked about demand. 
And I said, when the cost of an input goes up, you want to do everything you can to use less of it. That includes changing your level of output. You want to buy more substitutes. You want to buy fewer complements. You want to do all that. But you also want to move output in the direction that it allows you to use less of this higher price input. For a normal input, that means when price of the input rises, you produce less output because that helps you use less of the input. For an inferior input, when the price of the input rises, you actually want to produce more output because that is what helps you use less of the input, right? You're always trying to move away from the input, and that's exactly what this product term is telling us. You're always going to move in the direction that helps you use less of it, right? That's all that's going on, all right? So that's, that's the case. That's why we would say for a firm, there's no question, there's no thinking about a Giffen good. There's no Giffen goods here for firms. That is, the firm demand curve is always going to be downward sloping for this reason. They're not going to use more of it when it gets more expensive. There's no income effect that could dominate the substitution effect, even if the input were strongly inferior. Yeah, let's, let's say, for example, you have two ways of producing output. You could use high-skilled labor at small scale, or you could go to big scale and use, like build a factory and use low-skilled labor. And so if the high-skilled labor gets more expensive, you might say, I'm going to move, mechanize, pay all the money to build a factory, and go to a big scale and get rid of the high-skilled labor. So that's the, that, in fact, is a real-world example where that would happen. Right, that if, if, you, if you would produce low scale using craft labor and high scale using cheaper uh, labor, or it doesn't really have to be cheaper, just different labor, then as craft labor gets more expensive, you're going to replace a larger, you're going to replace a smaller operation with a bigger factory. That would be a real world example where that would happen. Okay, and historically, actually, not an unimportant example for why you might get bigger in certain industries. Okay, so that would be an inferior input. Now, it is true that inferior inputs are probably less obvious and, 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 and prevalent in production theory, at least it, than they are in consumer theory. I think that's fair to say. I, I would say they, you come across them somewhat less, but there are some important examples of which the one I just mentioned is. Okay, any, any questions? But the more important principle to learn from this is this idea that you're just going to do what it takes to use less of it. And the difference for the, for the, for the consumer is utility what level wasn't a choice variable. They didn't get to say, well, geez, the marginal cost of utility has gone down. Let me get more utility, right? They can't move in that direction. If they could, then you'd have this same property going on in the consumer's problem. OK? 